lot of different perspectives, right? And in this case, you, you described for us a very uh, important um, uh, interpretation of this data, which is people say it's so impossible, but in fact you're showing that it's Yeah, exactly. Not. You do something concrete with that. Yeah, yeah. So you take, you take, because, you know, first time when I learned it for the first time, I, I take these pages and I have this endless sort of stream of note heads without any sort of <laughs> relevance musical and I start working through that you know and it took years until I realized that oh actually you know it's easy <laughs> okay it's not easy but yeah. it's not this sort of monstrous experience that people usually like to boast and uh, claim mm -hmm. you know Okay, with Herma, for example, this is uh, one of Xenaki's sketches for the structure, the algebraic structure of the piece. With Herma, we have a much more uh, primitive, this is from 2014, that was the first patch uh, Frederic de Villacqua developed for me. And uh, this is the very last page of Herma. We need some more sound, probably. Okay. Uh, so you see, that's <laughs> that's a typical situation. That's what Xenakis asks to be: twenty sounds per second. <laughs> it's the sort of explosion, the final explosion of the key. And now we are analyzing those things again, you know, very carefully, uh, sort of comparing the multimodal data with my annotations mm -hmm. and using Xenakis' technique of composing, so these densities, in order to create a measure of, of movement density in correspondence to Xenakis' measure of pitch density. Mm -hmm. So that could give us a measure of complexity if we can correlate the two for real experiments we are now conducted in technology enhanced learning Which is that? the the measure of movement density uh, that's 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 work in progress oh, okay. we haven't we haven't done it yet okay. but but it will be r really interesting and we need that because we need an index to be able to tell us uh, oh that piece has this sort of relation between this density and that density right and that that would give us really fun results we, we're we're getting there it's i'm at the late stages of that and it will be ready soon is it worthwhile to have uh, a kind of a linear motion rather than a kind of a jumping motion if you don't mind uh, it's like it's how do you mean where so uh if, if you're doing crunch and scale mm -hmm. right that's a different kind of motion exactly Th that that was exactly the case in what i sh showed before with xenax eh? The it's the difference. The it's the difference between this material yeah. and this material. But the, no, the uh, displacement notation right now are straight lines. Is it possible to have them color coded or something? Uh, to create, so yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's very possible to. I mean, here I've shown already three different, uh, th many different representations. For example, right. here if you have these lines, this linear material you can have it in the form of chords right. or in the form of um, no, fingers. I was just referring to the run, the run graph, the, the multimodal graph with six. Uh, oh, the, the signals, you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The signals is, I don't think the signals is something that the performer could use in any case. Right. Huh? It's very useful for analyzing and checking uh, those displacements basically and finding yeah. the profile but it's uh, and quantifying that because of course you have the uh, the data but uh, you don't use it as a performer back into the practice I would say in its pure form representationally speaking eh? right. but of course you can you can do all sorts of things mm -hmm. even with um, this sort of data Okay, just to show, I don't know how much time we still have. I want to show you another uh, video from our work with uh, Stella Paschalidou, the gorilla one, mm -hmm. 
So that's uh, the setting we had at the Aristotle University, late July 2020. Mm -hmm. And you see it was a very, very hard setup with also just mounting the cameras on the piano and uh, me carrying these very, very intrusive gloves. Uh, and But what we got out of that was the use of Mayo, so EMG data for muscular contraction. And that was quite interesting. So here you can see a graph of how they correlate to acceleration data. Yeah. On the right, it's the right and left hands. And uh, you can see the force, the muscular force, being exerted here over time. It's so higher as it goes higher, that means more force. Yeah, okay. exactly. Here. And so that's also work in progress, uh, trying to correlate this sort of muscular data with Xenakis. And we've found what I'll I'm going to show right now. So that's a very, very short example. I'll play it again mm. after. But now just to show you that we have this plotting of my force over time showing color coding the maximum force being exerted uh, and the minimum, the maximum with red, the minimum with blue in this color range. And you can see, is there much red in this uh, situation? No, actually it's, you know, most is in the lower uh, side of the spectrum yeah. and then playing every alley Xenakis. Uh, so we have found uh, we start finding very important features like when mm. we, fi uh, we find that when I'm uh, sort of playing the most difficult passages in every alley mm. the muscular involvement is not as uh, extreme as when I'm trying to play very very mm -hmm. silent things you know and then I get more contracted Yeah, yeah, it's muscular tension. It's ele electromyography, basically. So, uh, you know, that that's really exciting findings there. That... No. We have several measurements but that by default are in different conditions, but we don't control the conditions so as to show that uh, yeah. But what do you mean conditions in this case? Yeah, I mean the tension of uh, elements of being placed at uh, some other distance away from some other means to go by that can allow the software to even uh, review in more power or whatever. No, no, no. We, haven't, we haven't tried yeah. that. What, what would be useful to try would be different subjects, ob obviously. So yeah. now we are working with that, with yeah. me. But uh, obviously we want to work with like another two pianists that play the same yeah. uh, and uh, we can tell if there are similarities in these patterns of muscular activation, right? Yeah. Hard to make sure that all the time that they do this work, they do the same. Exactly. Thing. That's why it has to be very ecologically controlled, the, uh, the sort of setting for mm -hmm. conducting such an experiment. There is there is an initial baseline which is like exerting ma uh, yeah. the the maximum muscular force. And the lot lighter scale. Yeah. Like yeah. And so defining the range. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All that is implemented again in Max MSP. Here is the system I was carrying, which was a bit of an overkill. No, yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. That, that, that was, that was trying, trying to uh, decide on, you know, what is feasible and what is not. Obviously, that's, that's not what we ended up no, with. Also, I mean, if you have all these TV lights on your hands and you are making the things that you will do after the lights, I mean, it's not... Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. 
that's that's a very good question. Eventually, we ended up with a system which is quasi transparent. So it uh, it's the, the problem of, of video captation is that it's a lot of latency and there is problems. So mm -hmm. as we know, the latency is important in games. It's so big related to the mm -hmm. latency mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's not related. Yeah, but that's but already that's accurate. that's already resolved in this uh, sort of. Uh, work of ali aligning data and the patches that we are creating in order to synchronize the video and uh, acceleration streams eh? so that that's already taken into account before yeah it's resolved in certain cases like th in the video i showed you with the kinect it's yeah. it's not the case everywhere i mean there are obviously uh, cases whereby we're still struggling with <laughs> specifics yeah, yeah. but there are yeah yeah there is guest ah, work patch work very pragmatic considerations that make yeah. things work without yeah. necessarily having theorized about them yeah. you know it's it's a very practical activity yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah, sorry. yeah please 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 we have questions but with any no, 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 it's with lots, lots of repertoire. I'm just focusing. Yeah. I'll, I'll show a small example with um, other things like uh, Fernie Hall, for example. Yeah. Okay, here I have some specifics about the system we are using for technology enhanced learning, but just to show you some representations, I'm not sure how much time we still have. Before we were using Monday.com, our team was drowning. Work. Sorry about that. How long would you like to run? Uh, I'm good, uh, but it, it So this is a tablature I made for uh, a I call it a tablature for uh, Brian Fernieho. It's lemma iconetogram. It's learning lemma iconetogram, and I have combined this Max MSP system mm -hmm. with a system which is made for augmented interactive scores called InScore. It's created at CRAM in Lyon. And so you can program basically images, signals, videos, uh, symbolic notations, everything. So you see here the InScore. You have a signal, it's a bit hidden of my. Okay, so this is me sight reading Lemma Iconetogram, the first page, <laughs> and having analyzed the movement here yeah. with this uh, basic uh, envelope I showed before, so the attacks and the displacements, mm -hmm. basically. Here is the real score, which we'll see later. Ah, and uh, here was a second video playing inside. I don't know if you noticed. Whereby there was a scrolling score showing again the displacements. Eh? Like one, two, three, four. You know, it's like conducting gestures almost to play. Um, um, and how we come up with this sort of thing again we have an algorithm for reducing the score uh, I, I should have somewhere the original score i'll show you the original score very shortly but here is so we have the midi data transcribed into uh, this uh, space-time representation this is automatic with tools developed by the in score uh, developers and then we are s sort of removing nodes to show different embodied layers so in the first case we, we have the complete thing the, the complete midi file so to speak the red nodes are always the five fingers the fifth fingers the blue nodes are the thumbs and you see we leave only the fifth and the thumb so we define the grasps and then we also uh, remove some of those intermediate nodes to define only their movements. And we end up with a skeleton 
of, of the so whole thing. It's it's Schenkerian almost, yes. Other people have uh, said that. But it's interesting because then you do have the original score by Fernie Ho, yeah. and you have this basic gestural pattern which is chunked into six things. Eh? And so you have one, two, three, four, five, six to play the <laughs> lemma icon epigram. So it's, it's a very interesting, uh, I think, uh, device, because uh, way of approaching because you, you oversimplify this very complex thing, you create this ground of gesture, and then you go back and you start adding detail. Yeah, but here I'm not exactly choosing, yeah, because I here I'm dealing. I, I, I uh, you did what? I didn't finish the. the ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Tell me, tell me. I, I did. You are simplifying by one way of navigating, of interpretation of this uh, score. Mm -hmm. And when in this context, the interpretation is the other, no? Here Absolutely. Is yeah, that's that's totally personalized. Tablatry, let's okay, say. So in your group, uh, when after this data processing, this ex etymological part of the test, when you come back to play, uh, you are basing this data analyst with this personal approach. Your it is approach personal, but on the other, yeah, but on the other hand, uh, uh, there are not infinite ways of playing for example if you have if you have a note uh, the middle C on the piano and then you have another note in the end of the piano there are not many ways you can you can play that you know there's no interpretation there because your upper arm has to move has to do that movement so what I'm yeah, what I'm yes then you will go back but this sort of basic ground has some universals in the sense that everybody will need to do the upper uh, movement. There is no pianist that would do uh, and <laughs> and yeah, keep the you, are, you know. You are really just coming back to lemma icon epigram. Of course, play, of course, of course, of course. That yes, yes. This is. I mean, it's a system of mechanics universal. Of course, in the movement, it's it works, but then there is a particular. <laughs> so the thing is, the system is applicable for very. I'll I'll show I'll show I'll show the application. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would like a more personal analysis of that. So how how it could change your insight of of a um, of a. It uh, you could have. You could you could definitely I map you you can map any any sort of notation like that you can correlate any sort of notation I don't know what the interest of it would be with that Morton Feldman question. for example here th I, I haven't finished though because this is only the first step eh? then you create these systems whereby you you make applications concrete applications and here is an example. That's an example whereby I have created the score following system. This is again from Mists. Eh? So basically the system at this point, I, I have synchronized the cursor and I'm uh, registering my accelerations and I'm following the, the cursor. So now I'm following the system, okay? Mm -hmm. And the system sort of registers what I'm doing. <laughs> now, this now, it is the system that will be following me and I will be changing my original performance.
So the trick here, just to, to respond to Fernando's initial question, what's the use of that? The thing is that what the system follows now are exactly these chunks. It doesn't follow note by note, like in Anteskop, mm -hmm. uh, by Asia Cont, for example. It follows only the chunks I have defined as a user. And that's great because in Antescofo you need to input the whole score in symbolic form. Antescofo is not free to have all these uh, of course. parameters in your hand, so it's like it's Yeah, but that's that's the <laughs> but that's like but that's the different but no, but here it's not all the apparatuses, yeah. it's just two very small modules. Yeah. And there is no comparison to Antescofo, I have yeah. to say, because of of course Antescofo is a huge project, hugely successful. Yeah. But of course, of course, it's symbolic score. I know, I know, I know. It's uh, it's uh, audio following through a symbolic score. Yeah, that's that's why I'm showing that. That's why I'm. Okay, so here we have a different performance again, where the system follows me. Now I'm playing much softer and much faster. It works quite good. And here I play with a different articulation, so basically a different movement even. And I make mistakes intentionally, but still the system can follow. Why? Because these chunks, this basic syntax remains the same. Eh? That's one example. There is a more extreme, ex and here is I describe a bit how, how the system and the connectors between the in-score and the motion follow work. Um, but there is another, actually, uh, example which might be a bit more interesting for you. I have to find it fast. Uh, I think it's that one here. Okay, so here I'm going back to the Ferniho and I'm, I'm having the system follow not only here in the first example of the following, it followed really variation, normal variations of the, performer, uh, the performance. Here it will follow distortions, it will follow completely different ways of articulating the material. That's that's the representation I showed before. Here I'm teaching the system. Okay. It didn't work. Here it's an instance of the system not working. So the system didn't uh, didn't follow very very well what I was doing. I don't know why. Probably. I did it much different than in the beginning. But you can hear, I'm not playing the piece itself, lemma icon epigram, I'm just playing the chords that correspond to the different positions, eh? that correspond to this uh, ground score eventually. So, didn't work. We go further. The following is shown here. The green signal is the new gesture I'm doing. The gray signal is the gesture I have recorded before. Now I'm playing the piece. So you see, I gave the basic pattern and the system followed when I played <laughs> the real thing. That's, 
that's quite uh, that's quite interesting because it's not the way we generally think about motion following uh, about score following eh? so because we think about following either the sound or the notes but here it really follows my chunks my underlining gestures mm -hmm. this reductive gesture not the phenomenal gesture mm -hmm. another instance again it didn't start because i didn't do the preparation <laughs> I played much slower, very differently. <laughs> I'm sticking a bit. <laughs> I'm doing these repetitions. It waits for me, you see? The system waits. I keep playing. It stands there because it doesn't have the displacement to go further. And the last one, I will completely distort it. Very slow in the beginning. And now... It didn't follow these alien things. Eh? It waited until I went. So that's, that's why we did this chunking you see because then you can really go into uh, some sort of um, very interesting applications and this is so to speak the the trip uh, back to ontology somehow it's the trip uh, back to uh, going from something we know so we get to know the basic structure of the movement and then we go back to an application to do again interactive music and create something new with that. That's that's the thing. Okay, maybe I should finish with um, some of this project uh, at Paris 8 with uh, Jean-François Jego, Aurélien Duval. So we tried to create what we said, we described as different symbolic and virtual spaces. The idea was to communicate to the audience aspects of the performance that normally remain hidden. Mm -hmm. That normally the audience, and there comes the question of the listener as well, eh? how, how the listener can know more. And so we created, we combined motion because I'm using motion capture. The motion capture uh, controls the visuals, the visual staging, and all that is correlated to the symbolic spaces, to the notation. And for this occasion, we even used the original sketches of Xenakis, which we took from the archive, uh, to create the uh, sort of symbolic spaces. So he s here you see it's me with the motion capture system. I'm wearing a full body, uh, 32 uh, sensors all over, mm -hmm. and that creates a, visual av a, a virtual avatar of mine here. And there are several, several qualities of movement accelerated, not only acceler uh, visualized, not only acceleration, but also speed and jerk, the second uh, degree of acceleration, the acceleration of acceleration, so to speak. And you have what we call egocentric and allocentric uh, views of this data, so the audience can perceive what I perceive, in the left hand or the audience can perceive me as in concert and then all that was integrated with uh, some sort of environmental projections you know on the ceiling on the audience that was a very very uh, <coughs> difficult performance it took place in the uh, pandemic in a very small window we had to make concerts in March 21 eventually and we had a small audience from students from the university and it was very very hard to organize logistically because you can imagine that this is not easy to do and we did it in very very short time uh, so it was uh, really a miracle it happened 
There is interactive staging, so there is controls for the audience to come and participate and play with the effects in real time. Um, and as for the performance, I can show you a bit. You can find all that on YouTube. Uh, where is my cursor? Um, okay, just... So generally speaking, there are those elements of the caustic effects, the water-like effects in the ceiling and on in front of the audience, which create this augmented environment. And then there are the sketches of Xenakis superimposed with the avatar of my movement. And, and the intensity and all that changes according to what I'm doing with my hands. So it becomes really palpable for the audience in terms of energy. Um, here, just to show you a bit the nuts and bolts. Here you see the avatar in real time. You can see that the system itself is not so invasive eventually as because my hands are free so unfortunately we don't track the fingers but we have the wrists so we have all the displacement sort of energy and concerning the physical spaces this is how it looks so that's a perception from inside the software for the virtual reality unity those are the symbolic spaces of Xenakis. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, maybe that's the first sketch, the, fir the very first situation in the piece. And then that's the second sketch, and we change color. So the audience perceives really sees the sketch, perceives the change in ambience and color in everything eh? and also in movement because of the movement qualities okay and we've done that for the whole piece and this is just to see the interface indeed and how you can actually you can if we had a system a real virtual reality then the audience would be able to go around the performance and eh? the performer to, to be really in the virtual space and go uh, interact with the sketches, etc. We haven't done that, but that's part of the idea. Okay, and now what we do at this point in time for a concert in Paris, 24th of November, if anyone uh, could be there, is totally different because we have all four pieces by Xenakis each piece is associated with a different capture technology and with very different results visually and we also have a ritual about me being dressed and undressed with the technologies mm -hmm. so it's a very very interesting sort of theatrical thing as well taking place between the pieces mm -hmm. and it's the complete Xenakis piano works um, that's what? Oh no, that's the same. Okay. To finish, about forms of epistemic violence. First of all, uh, I'm, we're talking about technology enhanced learning, but then we're using these very, very charged words like optimization of learning. What is in music optimization of learning? There is lots of research that shows, for example, that music makes sense for people and attracts people to continue working on it uh, when music is harder than what they can get eh? so why optimize learning why take that away from the user why offer them with <laughs> will that uh, keep their interest or 
doing what's called an auto pellet activity like music another issue is the reciprocal relation between music and human computer interaction and music uh, there is lots of history about how our interfaces in our everyday life like the mouse and the windows were developed by musicians basically people were experimenting on the work of musicians and so it's very good to see how these interfaces feed back to music and in what ways because there was indeed violence involved in uh, this relation so the musicians were exploited just because they were musicians to create interface just because they were socially uh, so to speak in a lower status and no other professional would do things like that <laughs> so that's that's quite interesting one has to think about the origins of body appropriation i'm showing here just indicatively these devices early devices about learning the piano the, the, that was a french one of Dactyl by georges retif and there were many similar things you know the schumann the accident schumann had when he tried to become a virtuoso by making his fingers independent eh? those are very characteristic and symbolic of this implicit violence in our education as performers and of course this sort of violence which could be associated with Foucault and his notion of biopower is today transcribed into the no power the transcription of, of my movements into data and then the use of that data how how is this data as you said tho those were the ethical questions you were referring to eh? how is this data going to be used mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, question, yes yes no o is from the mind it's from the greek uh, it's a it's a term actually no yes. power it's it's uh, the sort of uh uh follow-up to biopower whereby it's not only the biological processes that become grasped by uh forms of authority but it's also now our very minds in the sense that for example we can be producing data and this data be used by other people by corporations without our consent so these are huge issues which i cannot tackle here but i'm just giving you a taste of uh, the sort of thing i'm i'm working right now i'm writing a book actually on the biopolitics of human and machine learning mm -hmm. and this is uh, the domain that i'm touching talking about cognitive and surveillance capitalism mm -hmm. for example and eventually providing some ecological visions how can we use this data in order to decentralize in order to make our practices viable ecologically and ethically so i think that that's a very global view i have omitted many things in between but uh, this would have no end if uh, <laughs> I, have, I would have put everything as a conclusion concerning our ways of uh, accessing knowledge. I think it's quite clear from what I've shown that indeed data, multimodal data, body rendition into data is uh, one way to above all communicate communicate elements of our practice both through listeners performers composers researchers mm -hmm. to deal with those data as uh, scientific entities mm -hmm. to create theories to uh, try to correlate with insights so data in themselves are i would say an interface eh? almost mm -hmm. interface between different domains to be used again back into artistic practice so empirical data are indeed important but they cannot substitute the sort of immediate experience the getting wet part mm -hmm. at least when we're to, uh, and again even if we are speaking about the listener i don't think a listener could uh, afford not going to a concert hall and uh, just uh, dealing with uh, 
sort of uh, virtual con concert halls, which is also a huge debate after the pandemic. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, the sort of involvement needed in order to recite our definitions for the water, to create our own representations and mental models mm -hmm. apart from the interaction. So I, I would say those three elements are all sort of necessary. Mm -hmm. We cannot dispose of anything in this in this process. Okay, that's Uh, what's the sort of uh, response to that or yeah, like by listeners? No, but we are seeing in particular on your end because you are... Uh, this is not open, this is not open source, so to speak. Mm -hmm. This is not something I we provide yet. No, no, I don't mean it in that, but it's that you have noticed I'm a great colleague. I'm ah, a other, other, other types yeah. of... There are many, yeah, there is lots, uh, so you're asking about related work. Yes, yeah. There is lots of things. One thing that comes to mind and uh, was uh, very interesting was um, this uh, um, American Chinese uh, researcher at MIT, mm -hmm. Xiao Xiao, and she created a mirror fugue, as she called it. So it was a, an audio video installation whereby uh, you would have an actual video projection of a pianist, of a virtual pianist playing on a disc clavier. Mm -hmm. and, and that was really uncanny because it creates physical presence out of uh, very simple technologies, basically. Mm -hmm. But she did it in such a convincing way, mm -hmm. or you could play four hands with your deceased teacher, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's an example of how techniques like that, but that's very different. Um, talking about pra artistic practices with data that's that's a huge domain which is you know curated by many many different communities mm -hmm. artistic and i'm thinking more about um, like working with for example a free existing piece i'm not talking about ah. using the data to generate anything but working with a free existing mm -hmm. anyway i i can also just talk for a minute if you want uh, but it's uh, yeah it's coming from so you're and talking mostly about analysis of I mean music. Yeah, using the technology for analysis. Uh, uh, those technologies are as standalones. For example, Inscore mm -hmm. has been used by a, a huge community of users, mm -hmm. uh, and it's very intuitive. Uh, the learning curve is not mm -hmm. too steep, so you can learn it quite mm -hmm. fast to code a bit the the elements, the graphic elements. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can use it for creating interactive scores, for example, for a Mozart piece or whatever. Uh, it was more about, because I, yeah, as you have said, I've already done, like, it's going to bring me to Janet Collison. Okay. And uh, there are some elements mm -hmm. that, um, that I'm thinking about whether this should be applied in a, like, a less electronic way, if you don't know, if there are things like this. Please. Okay. Maybe we can uh, we can discuss about that. Yeah, like, uh, if you want to show me what you have in mind, I, I could have some suggestions yeah, about if yeah. those could. Uh, but generally speaking, all that is very modular. Yeah. It's very adaptable to to other uh, projects and situations. So. Okay. Actually, I have to say those technologies were first the accelerations part, the accelerometers I'm using. I don't think I showed them because we dealt only with the chunky sensors, but okay. 
that's the basic sensor I started using using the the green one I'm showing here right and that was it back in 2014 now we have uh, those are commercialized those were custom made the Tilcom and by Emmanuel Fleti and now they are uh, commercialized they're called Riot Vitalino and you can buy them for uh, you know not uh, not too much it's very affordable um, and those modules I put on my wrists so that's all I need to, to play with wristbands I put them underneath and I do it but these modules were initially used by Marie Kimura which who you might know a uh, great pioneer violinist who did the first experiments by placing that on the bow mm. of the violin and that was the first collaboration also of my team at Ilkham, Frederic de Villacqua with mm. performers and so I came from there somehow mm. I came from violin so <laughs> maybe we should yeah. speak about that so yeah, yeah. Absolutely, but all that, it's a question of, uh, you know, being able to take the time and develop your own system eventually, mm -hmm. right? So composing interactions, are, as mm -hmm. Fernando said, eh? and it's not, uh, it's not trivial. It takes lots of, it, y it's really about composing one's instrument in a certain way, and um, uh, there is no easy answer to that, but... Uh, hugely creative uh, endeavor mm -hmm. but uh, yeah uh, one needs to find their own ways there Perfection yeah. as uh, the the perfection of uh, the high modernist performance practice model, so yeah. that every note should be in the right place and every yeah. this that's sort of virtuoso hyper virtuoso. Yeah, so I'm just curious about this yeah no, that's a good question. Uh, that's uh, exactly what I'm trying to to work against mm -hmm. because the way I'm approaching here these transformations of notation, for example, and these multiple entry points to notation imply also a multitude of performances mm -hmm. so I there is no <laughs> single performance yeah. that I would uh, consider viable or the best performance or the best performer mm -hmm. so yeah if there is a takeaway of all that mm -hmm. and the ecological vision if you like is that we navigate a certain work uh, of course if there is a composer a composer will always have the authority to to impose uh, certain pathways and certain uh, uh, desires and that's absolutely fine but I think they uh, what we are getting to know from what earlier was considered as masterpieces of the 20th century or uh, after 1950 music is that you know all this music actually never sounds the same between different performers like there is actually a series of conferences in Paris, it, uh, Paris 8, organized by Mike Solomos, which is called Interprete Performex and Artist. And there, exactly, it's uh, unbelievable how uh, we always come to the same uh, conclusion that 
there's not a single performance that would claim validity over others you know that this is the real tonight the way some people like to say that this is the real Bach or this is the real Mozart no that's I think that's unacceptable in our uh, quest for inter and that's that's where I prefer the the word interaction than interpretation we interact with musical words we don't interpret them we, we don't just understand and you know try to do something different we interact and each element of this interaction feeds in the result and the result is also provisional because we play it again and I try to play always differently I never reproduce my performances even if I play worse you know even if that means that I will not be satisfied in the end I'm, I'm very interested in exploring new ways to, to do things that answers the, the question? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a question, so I think it's quite yeah. interesting. But it's, yeah, 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 yeah. of course, of course. It's like if if there was a, a test of doing this, your entire interest has to start with this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's about it's about deconstructing, yeah. transforming the yeah. score, so. Yeah. And you see, not, not all people are also uh, comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Many composers have felt, I've received criticism about that, eh? mm -hmm. many composers have felt but even Fernando implied it before that, okay, you do this sort of chunking, but then you need to play the real thing. The, there is a score mm -hmm. that we, you are going to play the final score of Fernando. Mm -hmm. No, but you were right there that it's not, I'm not playing from the score I, I created. I always play from the original score, but it's how... Okay. Ah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But 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 it's true that I cannot, you know. The point of reference is always the the authentic score. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for me it's uh, obvious for all the music as well, for ancient <coughs> music, early music. It's yeah, I watched early music play also, and, and, and not just for the Minoa, I, I, I know that there is a, fi a, a philosophy part of it, but my question regarding that is that it was my criticism in a way that, and that, and that is a personal <laughs> of course, there is basically <coughs> the, um, this analysis of, uh, or, or this school of analysis meant um, the, the question that I wanted to, to do at the moment that we just were interrupted is, is uh, in, what, uh, in, what, in which way do you think that you will change the performance of a piece that you were you have already already played that's because a very good you question you can really lose your but of course that it will change it of course every experience will change it this one is a very particular one mm -hmm. do you feel more light I mean having all this data on your mind do you feel that, that your coming back to this score <coughs> you were more because I can see sensation I don't know if you Your soul as well, that you, you, 
Yeah, there is no easy answer to that because sometimes it's uh, complicating things. Sometimes I'm taking more time to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, because exactly it makes it. Uh, yeah, it can make it easier, lighter, because now you know. Oh, okay, it's Brian Fernihov. It's one, two, three, four, five. Ah, it's you know this little position. Okay, and then I can, but then, but then, you go back, you go deep to its position, for example, and you start sculpting as if you were a sculptor with. And that, that part becomes rather rather complicated because then you realize that to do only the one, two, three, four, five is nothing. Yeah. Uh, so it becomes superficial, you see what I mean? And then you, you have to go back and struggle again and, and put. So uh, efficiency is one thing, but the sort of relation you are forging with a piece over time is uh, is a very personal one, and it's one obviously also of uh, not removing blocks but putting blocks, putting more, putting more, putting more effort sometimes on things, you know, uh, trying to yeah, just it's. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, I don't have a definite yeah, answer. A definite you answer. At the end, like you are coming back to mental representation. Mm -hmm. or, or was it already the thinking? I, you know, I, I uh, when I was younger, I was playing everything by heart. I've played by heart the opera piece by Brian Fernihov, Opus Contra Naturam. I've played a good chunk of yeah in Darmstadt 2010. I've played a like, great chunk of Xenakis by heart. So what happens very often is that if you work on a piece <laughs> time and again, you, you memorize it. You have a strange analog to the process of movement with other pieces, with a piece with nothing on it. Mm -hmm. You see something like mm -hmm. analyzing a gesture, very different pieces of music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in a way, you don't have the same path like author to take it. You have the same uh, representation of a thing which is completely different. Completely different, yes. So yes, because at the level, because at the level of gesture, it might be the same. Yeah. Eh? yeah. Of course, but because you are taking one part and in the very in the body space, of it's course, so much more complex in the, 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 the movement. So of course, you are absolutely. It's it's a reductive. It's a reductive process there, mm -hmm. but. Uh, you're planning to go back to the I beginning. See, this going back process is the. It's very curious to me in terms of solution, but I'm not a performer, so I don't know in terms of your body as a performer, which is you are already seeing results of your research and you're coming okay. back to the performance. Is okay, so your so your question is rather if that can work when you've learned the piece. What's the point of doing that? Because you've no. learned the piece before, or? No, the process you have learned the piece before. Yeah. And you have this idea, then I go with the story, of, of doing it like this. Mm -hmm. Then you have, you are doing all these tasks, which in, in terms of research I'm very curious. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting for us. Mm -hmm. for me. But my question is very simple. You, 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 if you are sculpting for your body, and you see that you are sculpting for yes. your body, Yes, yes, yes. In in that sense, yes, because it makes my perception of my body and of my movements mm -hmm. much much clearer, and everything is demystified. You don't have this sort of. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You know. not, not the point of so that 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 is easier. But then, again, if I want to to make uh, you know to to find different approaches to playing something, different pathways, mm -hmm. I might need to change the. Yeah the movements as well so I might need to change the choreography so all that will go to the waste bin and I will need to make a new everything yeah of course that okay yeah absolutely
That's the concept. Yes, exactly. Yes, I agree. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I guess my point with that is that the quotation I made in these questions that were asked is it's not necessarily that it's useless, but there mm -hmm. may not be a benefit to all of those steps. It might be completely at the end. Um, mm -hmm. But but there's something in the action. There's something in the doing. Absolutely, the absolutely. And um, yeah, whereas you might have to recalibrate and redo things completely for for a different approach. Um, but does that produce a better art? Not necessarily, but it's 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 something you're doing, right? I don't know what a better art would be in the first place. Exactly. I mean, it's exactly. uh, it's well, a well huge. Well, uh, about that, which is ten to thousand. Yeah. You know. And which were yeah. the pieces you analyzed in each of these? Did you do it as well? I have recorded over the course of the years, like since two thousand six, uh, no, fourteen, basically. It's a multitude of classical repertoire also also we yeah. have recorded Bach yeah, yeah Bach Beethoven mm -hmm. um, some Mozart uh, mm -hmm. some romantic music uh, some contemporary music, some contemporary yeah. music. Yeah. it's Sinakis furniture I know uh, basically everything I do goes through uh, this process so it's yeah. huge amount of repertoire I haven't I haven't it's all my repertoire <laughs> since 2014. It's no, 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 no. But I'm, I'm, I'm collecting data from my learning process very often. No, I mean the the two modules, oh, the, the Bitalino. Modules. Yeah, that that I use like on a daily basis. Then yeah. what I do with the data is a different issue. I can, you know, I can just use them to see, okay, oh, on day one I did that, and then I did something different, and I can compare to oh, how. You have it also, you have in your place in this. It's, it's very, this yeah. is very easy to set up, it's very portable, it's uh, not all the features, I don't have no, the touch no. keys, I don't have, uh, you see, but the, some things are very easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.